friends today we will discuss the second chapter of economics sectors of indian economy we see various people engaged in many kinds of activity all around us some people are engaged in farming others in producing goods and some people in providing services all these activities are grouped together into three sectors that is primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector primary sector and its features are goods produced by exploiting natural resources this sector is also called agriculture and related sector for example agriculture fishing mining forestry etc this sector is called primary sector because it provides base for all the other two sectors secondary sector natural products are changed to to other form by use and of ways of manufacturing the process of manufacturing could be in factory workshop or at home for example sugar cane which is produced in the agriculture sector is converted into sugar or gold by manufacturing process cotton which is a primary product is converted into cloth at various stages of manufacture this sector is related to various industry so this sector is called industrial sector tertiary sector the activities of this sector help in the development of both primary and secondary sector this sector does not produce anything just provides services it is also called service sector the goods produced both in the primary and secondary sector require the facilities of transport and market for the development of this sector more facilities like go downs banks transportation communication market etc are required and these things are provided by tertiary sector so it is providing services and hence it is called service sector various production activities in the primary secondary and tertiary sector produce a large number of goods and services we have to see how many goods and services are produced in the country in a particular year and how many people are employed in the three sector we have also to see which is the most dominant sector in terms of production and employment to find out total production in the country the value of final goods and services produced in the country in a particular year are calculated and not their number suppose the production of wheat in the country in a particular year is 10000 kg and it is sold at rupees 8 per kg then the final value of wheat in that particular year would be rupees 80000 in the same way 
we calculate the value of all the goods and services produced within the country in a particular year. We have to count the cost of final goods and services. For example, farmer sells his wheat at rupees 8 per kg. The flour mill sells the wheat flour to the biscuit company at rupees 10. At the biscuit company, they add up ingredients like sugar, ghee, labor charges, and other manufacturing charges, and sell the biscuits at rupees 60 per kg. Biscuits at rupees 60 per kg is the final cost of the biscuits which the consumers have to pay. We do not count the intermediate cost. The meaning of intermediate cost is the various ingredients which are used to manufacture a final product is called the intermediate cost. In case of a furniture, it would be nails, uh, other plastic articles, polish, sunmica, etc. And in case of biscuits, it is sugar, flour, ghee, labor charges, and other manufacturing charges. We do not count the intermediate goods because we have already counted them in the final production. If we count the intermediate cost also, it would lead to double counting and we will not get the correct value of production. The value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year. The sum of production in the three sectors is called the gross domestic production. Gross domestic production is the value of final goods and services produced within the country during the particular year. It is a very difficult task of counting GDP. It takes a lot of manpower and hard work to calculate the gross domestic production. This task is undertaken by Central Government of India with the help of all the government departments of Indian states and Union territories. From the histories of the developed countries, we see that in the initial stages, primary sector was the most dominant and important sector. People were engaged in farming. But with the improvement in the methods of farming, now there was more production and people had time for other economic activities like craft and trade. Trade became an important activity. With the growth of trade, there was demand for transporters, administrators, etc. About 150 years back, there was development of manufacturing industry. Factories came up. People migrated from rural area to urban area to work in the factories. Now, manufacturing sector became an important sector in terms of production and employment. About 100 years back, there was a huge shift towards tertiary sector. With the growth of primary sector and manufacturing sector, that is secondary sector, there was a huge demand for services leading to growth of territory sector or service sector. 
This is the general trend we see followed by the developed countries all over the world. Thank you friends for watching my video. If you like the video, please do share, comment, like and subscribe to my channel.